Who knows what Christmas is all about? It's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer, we, we, we smile a little easier, we, 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 we share a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. You're listening to nothing important. Merry fucking Christmas to you. Please enjoy the show. Strap on your tampon. It's that time of the month on the Nothing Important Podcast. I'm broke, but I'm happy. I'm poor, but I'm kind. I'm short, but I'm healthy, yeah I'm high, but I'm grounded I'm sane, but I'm overwhelmed I'm lost, but I'm hopeful, baby And what it all comes down to Is that everything gonna be fine, fine, fine Cause I've got one hand in my pocket And the other one Giving a hot five. I feel drunk, but I'm sober. I'm young and I'm underpaid. I'm tired, but I'm working. Yeah. I care, but I'm restless. I'm here, but I'm really gone. I'm wrong and I'm sorry, baby. When it all comes down to. Is that everything's gonna be quite alright? Cause I've got one hand in my pocket And the other one's laying a cigarette What it all comes down to Is that I haven't got it all figured out just yet I got one hand in my pocket And the other one's giving out peace sight I'm free but I'm focused I'm green but I'm wise I'm hard but I'm friendly Baby, I'm sad, but I'm laughing. I'm brave, but I'm chicken shit. I'm sick, but I'm pretty. Baby, what it all boils down to is that no one's really got it figured out just yet. Cause I got one hand in my pocket, and the other one's laying on me, I know. What it all comes down to, my friends, yeah, is everything's just fine, fine, fine. Cause I got one hand in my pocket and the other one is in a taxi cab. Um, say that again. We're recording now. I said I found a set list a couple weekends ago when I out of my in my cymbal bag when I was playing in this practice space downtown, and I had no idea what the 
some of the songs even were. Like I have never, I swear I'd never heard the name before. You'd never heard the name of the songs that were on the set list for the band that used to play in. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> I, That's I'm how we used of, to roll. I'm just kind of more amazed that it's lasted this long because fuck, it's been like 10 years since we played and it was like, five years with you before that or however fucking long like that's amazing <laughs> yeah and i was i was showing the guys i was playing with the list and they they couldn't fathom the fact that that set we had 35 songs i can't even fathom the fact that was we it the first half songs. of the power hour or something because we had 60 songs for the power no hour. this was a full a full show we had two thir- set lists one was like 17 songs and one was like 18 songs we had 35 songs in our catalog I guess. You know what's amazing to me is when, whenever anybody brings up the band, uh, every once in a while, somebody will remember some part of a song that we wrote, like it's our own original song. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, what, what did you, uh, how did it start? And I'm like, uh, uh, great question. <laughs> yeah, no, no fucking clue. No idea how the hell any of that shit started. It starts with a beat and an instrument and a note, I think. it's something. Actually, usually how every song started was is because I don't know how to tell time sing or play an instrument but i was fronting our band like you can't read a clock right exactly <laughs> like even though uh, you wore one around your neck <laughs> <laughs> but but uh uh usually how everything started was I'd, I'd have to look at dave and he would nod at me like one second before i had to start singing i'm like okay and so i hope i'm on time because we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna roll with it which by the way you you've kind of ruined me for other bands like people that are, are seasoned musicians can deal with me but mm-hmm. we had such a like rapport mm-hmm. with the onstage cues because you never knew your place and shit right that i just do that to other people and expect them to comply like, so like, like in other bands and i'm like you know the other bass player in my cover band i'd be like i give him the nod right like you know that i would always give you and he's just like what oh, and I'm like, oh <laughs> no that's like your cue i'm just like just looking at you sometimes because i would just look at you you knew it was time right you know and like casey would get it when casey would jam with us like he would get it all the time, but like people that you know, it's just like I'm so used to be, used to be like, yeah. Well, I think what was good about our band is like we were we were generally friends. Mm-hmm. So like, but like once we got started, we we could feel each other through and up through, the music. Yeah, through through the music. Well, and, and it's true because remember we went like a couple years before we had monitors. Mm-hmm. Remember, and I'll never forget the first time somebody brought up a monitor, and I was like. Like a, like a TV screen? Like, <laughs> like, I really had no idea that a monitor meant, like, a speaker that, like, plays the shit back at you. Right. And so I'm amazed that somebody who's, whose life revolves around music, and Tim, you played drums, and you, you obviously had way more experience in that kind of thing than I did, because all I wanted to do was get on stage, act like an asshole, get free beer, and see what ridiculous things we can... <laughs> like, that was my whole goal so with the band, you're right? a good front man. <laughs> right. I was just like, oh, what, what, what the fuck? Like, let, let's do this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, like, and I've said that before, like you guys carried me, but it'd be funny because like I could deviate and you guys would jump right in, even if it added like another measure or verse to the, right to the song. That's, that's another part of practicing. So I, you have to practice how to improvise. It's improvisational. There was a very improvisational aspect to our shows when it wasn't really supposed to be that way. Well, right. Because I think there <laughs> had to be, because I had no clue. What right. I was doing. And we were just having fun and being drunk and, and, uh writing songs that day anyway right yeah <laughs> our most famous song was written the day it was recorded right exactly there, <laughs> there were several times too where where because it would be kind of difficult for us to practice throughout the week where we would hold like a two-hour practice mm-hmm. then go play the show that and, night and it wouldn't even be a rehearsal it'd be like let's work on that new song yeah <laughs> <laughs> so not only is the new song gonna suck the the rest of the songs are gonna suck too Mm-hmm. What's but, a, what's the most famous song that was recorded the day of? The Wilmington song. The Wilmington oh, song. Okay. So okay. for those of you listening, uh, Toby Keith has a song I love, called "I Love This Bar." I love this bar. And Dave and I, we well, first off, our band was the best scam ever because not only did we have shows where the full band played, but then we also had acoustic shows where it would just be Dave and I, and sometimes to like take all the money for the house for the night. Uh, like specifically like in normal Illinois at the pub too, <laughs> there was like two or three times where we would play a show there, but the opening act was just Dave and I pretty <laughs> much playing the songs acoustically. And then that's when Brett and I were getting drunk at the bar. Watching. Right. And then, right. Yeah. And then two hours later, we would play the songs with a full band. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were double dipping the chip. There's nothing wrong with that. Man. No, that's nothing wrong with flavor. Exactly. But like, <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, I hate, I hate this town as a, as a song about Dave and I's, uh, Dave and I's hometown, 
to the tune of I Love This Bar Mm -hmm. by Toby Keith. And somehow it got bootlegged back to the town it was about, Mm -hmm. made it on the radio station and became... Uh, on the local radio station, became like the the most requested and played song uh, for like a couple years running or something ridiculous. Two thousand six. Just yeah. throw that out there. Most requested song for two thousand and six. And yeah, you know what's funny is like <laughs> weird circumstances would happen though where I'd get kind of pissed, but I couldn't be really that pissed. Like for example, I know for a fact this is when uh, people don't do it so much anymore. But remember when people would have like a song as a ringtone? Mm-hmm. I would be like at the grocery store visiting my parents and picking up like chips or something for dinner with them that night. And somebody's phone would go off and it'd be me singing the stupid song on their ringtone. So I, I'd go ask my sisters and I'd be like, how, how did people make a ringtone out of that? What the fuck is this? And it turns out there was some asshole in town who had a cell phone store who was selling our fucking ringtone <laughs> to be with bought the phone. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking march down there right now. I'd be like, where the hell is my money? But then I'm like, <laughs> I can't do that because it was just like a stupid parody as a joke to record yeah, a live CD Toby of a Toby Keith song. <laughs> we owe Toby Keith yeah, a lot we of money Toby for that. Keith money, which so. is something I never thought I'd ever say. <laughs> <laughs> something I never want to say. Right, yeah. I don't even want Toby Keith owing me money. Why? I don't want to deal with him in any level of anything ever whatsoever. Yeah, he's, a, he's a horrible human <laughs> he's being. He's fucking Toby Keith. He is an Toby, if you're listening, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole... Um, but the whole dynamic of the band was, well, it was just hilarious. It was seriously like we were having a lot of fun. And then we'd go, uh, what was that? Like the Undertow or something in Michigan. We played with uh, Reggie Re- Reverend Wright time. Oh, this is all Rick's Ameri- American Ra- Cafe. Rick's, Rick's American. American Cafe. Rick's American was badass. Yeah, Dude, that was, that was a hilarious show. We were just talking about that with somebody last week. Oh, with the band fronted by the drug counselor that was doing Blow in the Green Room? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning and help these kids out on the drug addicts. <laughs> Good show tonight, guys. <laughs> what I loved about that, that show, that was our Blues Brother moment. Because in the movie, the Blues Brothers, they play like the Honky Tonk Bar. And they end up drinking so much, they actually owe the bar money. And that shit happened to us. <laughs> Did it? Because remember, yeah, we got like... Trays, got, of, trays of Jaeger bombs. Yeah, we got like, oh, we yeah, got like right. a $500 guarantee. And then it was... Free beer, but half off liquor. Mm. And because we traveled so far and we wanted to pretend that we were rock stars, uh, we were walking around with trays of Jaeger bombs, not, giving not, them to girls, and ended up owing the bar like 300, 300 bucks. bucks yeah. not, not trying to live like rock stars, Brian. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. Actually, one of, my, <laughs> one of my favorite things, most rock star moment ever, is when we checked into the hotel, uh, Brent, the bass player, and Tim... The drummer were being loud, and the neighbor next door comes knocking on our door, tells us to be quiet. We tone it down for about 10 seconds, get loud again, and now we're getting loud in the hallway because we're going to go eat before the show. And I remember that same neighbor came out and said, hey, I told you guys to be quiet. And Brent, our bass player, turns around and goes, no, you be quiet. We're in a band. (laughs) (laughs) And the guy stopped dead in his tracks. And all of a sudden, he was like, oh, really? What, what, what band do you guys have? <laughs> and we like tell him the name of the band. He's like, oh, that's that's cool. Where are you guys playing? <laughs> like, we told him. And it was and like, we, we went from being the most obnoxious assholes to being the most rock and roll people ever. I think like, we were all in full suits that night, too. Yeah, we were because I, I was on stage and I ripped all the buttons off my off my shirt during uh, our cover of Mama Said Knock You Out by L. Cool J. Wow, so there's my memory because I've been saying for years I want to play a show in suits and <laughs> no, we, I've we, actually <laughs> done it. No, it was shirts and ties though. It wasn't suits, no jackets. Uh, it was shirt and tie. I think I had a jacket on. Okay, Tim may have had a jacket. It's because you're fancier than me. But I'm I didn't not, even own I'm a suit not jacket so back then. fancy. I didn't even own a suit jacket back then. I, no, was I didn't probably, either. Yeah. I was probably wearing whatever I wore to work. I for think you were job like, didn't you like go searching for your buttons after the show? Because you're like, this is my only button up shirt. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good. Good times though. Like, what, what a cool venue and just absolutely yeah, ridiculous. That was a kick ass show. Good like Eleven years ago. Yeah, I, I was telling the story the other day too of uh, Reverend Right Time. People have heard of him, by the way. Oh yeah, they were big. They were a really big funk band. Yeah, like festivals and shit. That's right. We played with people that like at least a dozen people have heard of. No big deal. Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at NotImportantPC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. 
Thanks for being awesome.